Hey there, this is Tim and I'm one of the partners of Paragon Partners. And before you get going on eBay, I really want you to watch this video. The I've been watching a lot of eBay videos while I'm in my shop packaging and I've come to notice this critical gap. Kind of what's going on is I noticed this path on eBay videos where first they tell you how selling on eBay is so great and why you should do it. Then they get you out there thrifting. They have you going to thrift stores, flea markets, auctions, whatever, to find cheap items to go ahead and sell on eBay for a lot of profit. And then they show you how to actually set up the eBay account. And I think there's a gap between the, uh, the first and the second steps. And it's why you want to do what you do on eBay or the area you should be dominating on eBay. So I want to go through that. You know, the first thing I talk about is master your niche. That is, if you're going to get started on eBay and selling, decide what niche you want to get into. And this is the classic way that a lot of people start getting uh, into eBay. Uh, for instance, there's like books, stamps, and coins. And this is a sort of field where 98% of the stuff is worthless. But if you know what that 2% is, you can actually make a lot of money there. The, uh, I have another friend of a friend, uh, when he's going to law school, he was dealing with pens on eBay. And he said like he paid about a third of his uh, law school curriculum just on dealing with pens. So I don't know what that is, but I imagine it's pretty good. You know, clothing, of course, is another common niche. The, there's a good eBay channel of, of a mother who just, that's all she does is buy and sell clothes. And she talks about her journey and how it allows her to stay at home and raise her two young boys. Um, I was watching another eBay video of this girl uh, when she was going to college. She did the same thing. She's buying and selling clothes. And she said she was making about like two grand a month doing that. So, of course, not a bad way to go it. The, and of course, I mentioned video games, but there's a, a lot of ways. And this is kind of the classic way that people get started on eBay, is deciding that you want to get into a niche and gain the knowledge to master it. Uh, and these are common niches, but I also want you to think of other niches as well. You know, for instance, I have a, another friend of a friend, and he's involved in automotive parts. And what he does is he goes to scrapyards and junkyards, and he strips the high selling parts off of cars. So for instance, he started with the doorknobs and then he started with the motors for the uh, uh, windows that go up and down. Then he went on to taillights and then he went on to like make wheels. And he was telling me, you know, he got a make wheel for a Mercedes. It was about 70 bucks. And of course he had to polish it up, uh, but he was able to sell it for close to $500. And he's able to go to junkyards. Of course, there's no shortage of parts. And he was able to define his niche in that area. Uh, I'm aware of this other guy and power supplies for computers is his niche. The, and for him, this is pretty easy because every time you go to the thrift store, they have power supplies there. And these are also, they also work well on Amazon, which uh, turns out good for him. And so he knows now, according to which computer, which power supply you need and when it goes with, uh, which brands sell better, which aftermarkets don't. And that niche has worked out well for him. Uh, I'm following this other guy on YouTube. His niche is slide rules or slide rulers. And, of course, you wouldn't think, man, since calculators have been out in the 70s, who does this? But, of course, there's this whole community of slide rule enthusiasts, and what they love are old slide rules and especially the vintage ones. So the ones from the 20s to the 50s, they love them, and he knows which ones are the good ones and which ones are the expensive ones. Uh, I follow this other guy, and his niche is the connectors on cubicles. The And, of course, he knows the different brands of different plastic parts. And what this goes to show is just think beyond the popular niches and what are you really interested in. Where do you have specific knowledge to apply to a particular area that's going to allow you to master that a particular niche. Next, of course, you can always make something, and this is kind of the Etsy road to go. The when I go to the post office to drop off my goods, I notice uh, in the bin there's always about 30 to 50 of these pink bubble mailers, 
And I asked the postal clerk what's going on. She told me about the vendor. I, I looked up the vendor. It turns out lives about five miles away from me. But she does is she makes uh, medium le medium price leggings. I believe they're about thirty to fifty dollars. High quality, of course. And I, I have no problem seeing tons of pink envelopes at the post office with her leggings that she's custom making uh, in her shop. And I think, wow, that's wonderful. Her. Uh, of course, soap is uh, another common way to make something. Jewelry. Uh, I've seen bits of furniture, pet supplies, pet toys, uh, even homemade spices. And just look at Etsy for influence. And you can see what's there. But making something can be a fantastic road to go on as well to help you start to monetize eBay. Then look into somebody else's passion. So there are people... Uh, who like to work, but they don't like to do the selling of it. So I have a, another buddy and his uncle, he repairs typewriters. Now, if you're just going to sell a typewriter on eBay, you're going to be around, say, 30 to $40. But his uncle, all he wants to do is work on typewriters. So he goes ahead and refurbishes them, gets them in the working order, and then he's able to sell them uh, in perfect working condition and now he's getting like around $120 for these typewriters and his uncle's doing them for about 30 bucks per typewriter and his uncle of course he doesn't want to deal with the eBay selling all the customer service all the emails and stuff like that I'm aware of this other guy and what he does is he helps restore vintage motorcycle parts and of course people with their old collector motorcycles they need these old motorcycle parts and this guy he puts together the parts in fact he has a shop with the shop, he gets a lot of parts out of it that he can't use. Uh, so he refurbishes them and he makes them available to somebody else to go ahead and resell on eBay. The uh, I found this other guy and he loves to do carving. All right. But all he wants to do is spend time in the shop doing carving. That's it. And I see where he hooked up with another seller uh, to go ahead and represent his products. Lastly, I have another friend of a friend. And he put together this little kit for his Jeep that works on his uh, top of his garage ceiling. So he has some little hoist mechanism to lift the uh, hard top off the Jeep. So when it's a sunny day, then he can take it out. In fact, moving those Jeep hard tops is a, is a pain. It's like a two person deal uh, when you're just gonna set them down. And so he puts together these kits, which are pretty cool. And now the whole theme is, is that there's a lot of people out there who are doing great work, but they don't want to take on the selling and business side of that work. And so if you can hook up with them, you can find a very unique uh, niche, which is very defendable. Next, go ahead and test something. So that adds value to it. So I have an, another buddy, and he does vacuum tubes. Uh, so a lot of times we see these vacuum tubes, they're untested. So the buyer is taking a risk. So this guy, he goes ahead, he's able to test these vacuum tubes. And sometimes these vacuum tubes, the right ones, can be you know, $100 to $500 for the right one. And when he can say, yes, this vacuum tube is working, you know, that uh, doubles or triples the price of that vacuum tube. I know another guy, and... Uh, he specializes in VCRs. He doesn't fix them, but what he does is he tests them. And he has a whole complete kit. Uh, so he always makes sure it has the remote. He puts, he prints off a PDF of the manual, and he even pairs it with a, a VHS unwrapped, or pardon me, it's wrapped tape. It's, it's never been out, it's still new sealed. And so the price of these VCRs go up from like $10 to say 30 to $35 because he puts a whole package together and he tests that VCR. Uh, I'm more this other guy. He's just down the road from me. But his little specialty is medical equipment. And specifically, uh, he's able to test and work on the lasers involved when there's medical equipment. Now, of course, that's pretty specialized and pretty narrow. I'm sure there's only a couple people in the U.S. who do that. But, you know, he's found his niche of just working with lasers. I saw another guy, and he works with these old camcorders, and he's able to test them. And, of course, most people don't have the film or the power supply. And so when the buyer, it's a big risk. But this guy is able to say confidently, no, I've tested this, and this works. So you can see when you're able to test something, you're able to take out a lot of the risk factor, so you're able to add more value to that product. And as I showed in the testing, it doesn't have to necessarily be ex expensive or difficult. 
Then moving up the pole is improve something. So take an item and make it better. So sometimes with these record players, uh, I know another guy, and what he does is he gets them, and he changes all the belts. And you can get a new belt kit for these for about $3. So he just unscrews them, knows the right belts, orders the belts, puts on the belts. And now I can say that they're, they're refurbished. The, uh, I know another guy, and what he does is his cordless foam packs. And you wouldn't think that people still go after these, but they do, and they're very common in office environments. And all he does is he buys new battery packs for these, which are two to four bucks each. All right. He sticks in the new battery packs in these. He goes ahead and tests it and sells it with new batteries. And on these office phone setups, he's getting 30 to 50 bucks a pop. I know another guy, what he does is he take, he's able to find old lenses, usually very cheap or very free. He's able to refurbish those lenses. He's able to take the scratches out of them uh, and bring them back to life. Now, of course, that's a little more specialized, but it, it shows how he's improving something. <clears throat> Finally, I know another guy. And he takes office printers. Now, I'm not talking about the home printers that, you know, the cheapy lasers that are under 100 bucks, but the real office printers, which are the two to $500 range. And he's kind of, he's got two things going on with them. First thing he does is he refurbishes them. So he opens this up and he's able to replace all the rubber and uh, cloth components in them. Uh, sometimes they have other plastic that wears out. So he's able to repair all the plastic parts. Then he also goes through uh, and some of these printers can be big and just by weight he has a specialized process to help ship them so it's kind of a double whammy uh, for people to enter that field then he's able to actually uh, provide a 90-day uh, guarantee that they will not man malfunction and he's able to come in you know usually about 40 percent cheaper than the retail price of these printers but you can see the point here is, is that people they take something and they're making it slightly better and they're adding value to it. Next, another way to go is local ads. Now, instead of going out to the thrift stores and the flea markets and stuff like that, I see what other people do is they say, you know what, I'll buy your stuff. If you have stuff you wanna sell, I'll buy it. And they look for things like Apple products, Bose speakers, uh, Apple, video game systems stuff like that and when you're in the cash position when you say yes I have the cash and I will buy your stuff you're in a very powerful position at that point because there are lots of people who need money and they need to sell their stuff and putting up local ads inviting the, the sellers to come to you can be very very strong as well the I've been watching other YouTube channels and this is how a lot of these people work and sometimes they're able to open storefronts where the people just come to them and say hey i got this really cool knife or i got this really cool telescope and things like that and they're able to make the good offers on those items with people just coming to their store all day another way is bulk buying now i've seen a ton of ebay videos on this and it's not necessarily for the faint of heart that uh, a lot of stores, of course, have bulk returns. You can get them from Home Depot. Uh, another famous one is bulk, where it's all Amazon returns. The um, Home Depot, Walmart, they all have these return pallets. The you know the boxes typically cost a couple hundred to a couple thousand, and you also have to pay for the shipping. But typically, they can get them for ten to twenty cents on the retail dollar, and then they're able to turn around and flip them and i've seen other ebayers who make a successful business out of this and i've seen their ebay videos where they open this huge box and they just keep on ripping things out and tell us what it's worth and what they're able to make on it and typically you know if the retail value was say it was 2000 they're able to come in between 800 and 1200 worth of retail value on uh, selling that stuff on ebay uh uh, most of the times you have to climb up the totem pole a bit because, like I said, this takes a bit more money and a bit more work and actually a bit more room to do. But some people, this is the way they roll now. Finally, become an authorized distributor of a product. And this is kind of the holy grail for a lot of people, not only selling eBay, but Amazon as well, that you want to be able to represent a person's product who's not currently selling online and say, tell you what, I want to sell your product online. 
Now, typically, you, uh, I wouldn't be surprised. You have to send out 500 emails to people, and you'll get back a couple responses, which may work out to one lead. But that one lead can keep you going for years and years and years. Now, I know another guy who's become an authorized distributor for, I believe it's about uh, eight vendors with good products. And he's, he's the sole authorized distributor for three of those. And, of course, he's just making bank. I mean, it's, uh, he's, he's making oh, tens of thousands of dollars per month. Now, it took him about three years uh, of constantly hunting to work up to those eight authorized distributors. But that effort for him paid off. So, in conclusion, before, after you say, I want to make money on eBay, but you, you, you spend your first dollar, here's kind of the questions I want you to go after. Is first, what is your passion? What is it that you really, really like to do? I'll give you another example. The, uh, I have another friend of a friend, and her passion is finding uh, out-of-production perfumes. All right? And she's able to get these uh, older perfumes, sometimes beyond the expiration date, but they're still good. Uh, and she's able to find them and sell them for a good profit. And she tells me how a lot of ladies, they consider their perfume or their signature scent part of their persona. And if they can't find that perfume, perfume, you know, they actually feel reduced in some way. All right. And she loves the hunt of finding these perfumes that are no longer in production. She loves it. That's her passion. She's made a great living from it. Uh, also, what, what is your, your unique knowledge? That is, what is the niche that you can dominate or that you can apply unique specific domain knowledge to add value to it? So I gave a couple of examples from like vintage pens to vacuum tubes and things like that. The, and finally, know what motivates you. I mean, kind of what's the subject area that uh, you like that helps you get up in the morning that you actually spend your spare time reading about? So after you decide you want to make money on eBay, but before you actually spend that first dollar, go ahead and think about the list I presented to you and what appeals to you the most and what is most realistic. Hope this is helpful. Cheers.